Greetings, everybody. This is going to be, I guess you could do the, uh, say it's an intro, introduction to the uh, Battle of Blood River. Uh, but I wanted to mention something. There was a guy who the Dutch Boers considered a prophet of God. If memory serves me correctly, his name was Rensselaer. Not sure how to pronounce it. I'm not going to look it up. But he's, if you look on the internet for the Boer Prophet, and I suggest using somebody other than Google, maybe DuckDuckGo or what have you. Uh, Google is destroying all the listings. I mean, you know, you, you search for something and it's not there. Uh, it's ha they've done that to me. I had a website. Uh, it was getting hundreds of thousands of views, and then one day it was gone from the listings. He's called the Boer Prophet, B-O-E-R, one word, and then Prophet. So look up the Boer Prophet, South Africa, and you could read about what he said would happen for the future when uh, South Africa, the South Africans, the Boers, the farmers, uh, gave up their faith in Christ and their obedience. And uh, in the slideshow of the pictures, where it says uh, a bunch of blacks holding the kill the Boer, well, the Boer was the name for the, the white Dutch farmers, the Christians. Well, that's what they're saying. Kill the Boer. Kill the white Dutch farmers, Christians. So check it out, people. The Boer prophet of South Africa. And you could read his prophecies. I've read them. And I'll tell you what, the guy was from, you know, what, 150, 100 and something years ago? Over 100 and something years ago. And uh, everything that he said is coming true. That's, uh, you know, is, is God done with prophets? I, I don't know. I don't think so. God will raise up prophets if he wants. You know, uh, he... He does whatever he decides he wants to do, but um, you should read about this guy's life. It's very interesting. All right, well, uh, let's continue on and do the uh, Battle of Blood River in South Africa. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep listening. Keep listening. Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to kind of be a little history lesson and how it ties into the Bible. This is going to be on the Boer Battle of Blood River. Now, the Boers were a bunch of Dutch Christians, from what I understand, they were Protestants. Well, they call us Protestants. Uh, actually, they were Christians. If anything, it was the Catholics that left the faith, not the Protestants. That's another lie that the devil has for you. But they were Christians, and they had problems in Europe, so they went to South Africa. And they had covered wagons, just like you've seen in the old westerns, you know, covered wagons. Well, they were very, very strong believers from what I understand. They honored the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Bible. And they were passing through the area of the Zulu Empire. And on December 16th in 1838, they were notified that they figured out that they were going to be attacked by the Zulus. Now you're talking a few hundred, like maybe three or four hundred Boers, of which probably at least half were women and children, okay? And according to some sources, up to 15 to 20,000 black heathen Zulus attacked them. Well, guess what? They got on their hands and knees and said, Lord, unless you give us victory, 
we are all going to be destroyed. And they begged the Lord's hand for victory in the name of Jesus Christ. And guess what? The reason it was called the Battle of Blood River was because the river ran red with the blood of the Zulus. They killed them by the thousands. The heathens attacked and God gave them the victory. At the end of the battle, they realized there was no possible way that they had enough bullets and gunpowder to have killed that many people. I don't know how many of you shoot, go shooting and, and own rifles and stuff, but I mean, you know, you're talking thousands and thousands of bullets. I mean, if you're talking just, uh, for example, a 45 caliber pistol bullet, a thousand of those weighs like 40 pounds, okay? I mean, you're talking, it's impossible. They couldn't possibly have carried that much gunpowder. And at the end of the, ba the battle, guess what? They still had gunpowder to protect their families, their wives, their children. It was an impossible victory, but God gave it to them because they honored the Lord. And let me tell you something. There's a reason why these lying preachers tell you that, oh, well, you don't need to repent of your sin. Oh, that's earning your salvation. No, just keep sinning, keep doing whatever you're doing. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to be saved. Yeah, well, that's why. Because God knows, and Satan knows God, that if he can get us to sin enough, eventually God will say, you know what, devil, you can have them, destroy them. I don't care. There's a reason for that, people. God demands obedience to him and his words. Obedience. Jesus Christ said, if ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And what were the two commandments that Jesus gave? Love the Lord and love thy neighbor as thyself. And I'm sorry, I don't think the Zulus were in mind when God said, love your neighbor. God's talking about our neighbors, our real neighbors, not these heathen satanic voodoo worshipers. You wonder why they're, they're coming to Europe in droves, why President ex-President Obama relocated entire villages from Africa and Somalia to the United States. This is the day of the heathen people because we have an, a satanic army of heretics preaching from the pulpits of what is supposedly the church. They won't preach God's true word. They won't do it. The only thing they care about is tithes. Oh, yeah, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Praise a Jesus. Yeah, the entire Old Testament was done away with except for the tithes. They're satanic heathens. And if God had sent them, they would preach the whole counsel of God. You know what God said? The Lord said in Numbers chapter 33, and I did an entire Bible study on Numbers 33. Verse 55, God told his people Israel, But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land, and who were they? The Canaanites. And guess what? When you look up the descendants of Ham, you know, Ham, uh, you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth after the flood of Noah, and look up the descendants of Ham, you're talking of the Canaanites. And guess where the descendants of Ham went? Africa. Ethiopia. Now, I'm not 
saying that uh, they were they were black. No, maybe the blacks were uh, in Ezekiel. I think it's thirty-one. Maybe they were part of the creation before before Adam. I don't know, but I know Ham's descendants went down to Ethiopia. Maybe the heathen satanic tribes there killed them or intermarried with them. I do not know. All I know is Adam is a racial description. It means to be uh, ruddy, to show blood in the face. Well, guess what? Ham's descendants went to Ethiopia. Whether they intermarried with the heathen, I don't know. Whether they were killed off, I don't know. But Numbers 33, 55, it says, But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that these which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. And in Joshua 23, 13, God gives a warning for those that are disobedient, that don't honor him, that don't keep his covenant. He says, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And guess what, people? That's happening in Europe, it's happening in America, and it's happening in South Africa. After the Battle of Blood River, the Dutch Boers, the Christians, got on their hands and knees and thanked and praised the Lord for their victory, this impossible victory over the heathen, satanic Zulu nation. And they made a covenant with the Lord and says, Lord, we're going to honor you and we're going to keep this covenant with you. Well, guess what? They did for a while. And the Lord blessed them. South Africa is the uh, from sub-Sahara Africa, it was the only modern Western nation in all of Africa. Why? Because the Dutch and the English built it. You go into central sub-Sahara -Sub Africa, what do you find? Mud huts. God honored them because they honored the Lord. And now look at it. They're being destroyed God, they broke the covenant, and God has turned his back on him, on them. And now the heathen, satanic heathen, are their rulers now. In Leviticus chapter 26, God warns what would happen to those who were disobedient. Leviticus 26 and verse, chapter 26 and verse 36. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power, no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in, their, in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. So you have a choice, people. Live in your sin and wickedness, or... Try to live as righteous life as possible and be obedient. You know, after the Battle of Blood River, I wonder if they said the, the uh, First Chronicles 1635. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory 
in thy praise. In 2 Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 2 and verse 8, the Lord says, Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Isn't that what the Lord did in South Africa? Oh, yeah. In Psalms 79 and verse 6, Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. In Psalms 102, verse 15, So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Psalms 105, 44, And gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people. What do you think happened when, a, when, the, when the Christians came to America and they saw the Indians? What were the Indians doing? They were performing human sacrifices and cannibalism. God gave us this land. It's like he gave the Boers the South Africa. In Psalms 135.15, it says, The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. For the Indians in America, it was totem poles. But you know what? We're under God's curse today. Ezekiel 7 and verse 24. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen. The worst of the heathen. And they shall possess their houses. Whose houses? Our houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease. And their holy places to be defiled. And that's what the churches are today. They're defiled. Listen to this, Ezekiel chapter 30 and verse 3. Well, let's take a look. All right, Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Howl ye, woe, worth the day. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord. Even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. How's that? But I'll tell you what, this is now the time of the heathen. But their day is going to end one day. Ezekiel 36 verse 24. For I, that's God, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Ezekiel 37, 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. Verse 28, Ezekiel 37, 28, And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, doth sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Here's a prayer that every preacher should be saying. Joel chapter 2 and verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? See, people, the heathen are, will say, where is their God? And let's close with this note. Ezekiel 37 and verse 21, we've read it. 
and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. People, God demands obedience. And don't let some satanic heretic tell you that being obedient is earning your salvation. If you're going to be obedient because you love the Lord. In John chapter 14 and verse 15, it's, Jesus says, If ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. In Matthew 22, verse 36, they asked Jesus, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus said in John 15 and verse 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, And Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 5, 2, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. 1 John 5, 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. I mean, come on. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, And the dragon was wroth, angry, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So just because you got some Jew that keeps the commandments, if they don't have the testimony of Jesus, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. Revelation 22, 14, and I'll close out with this. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, there's people that will tell you, oh, well, if you do all this, you're earning your salvation. I mean, really? All right, well, you know what? Call Jesus a liar when you, when you see him. Because, I mean, I just read, the, a lot of those words were the words of Jesus. You, you could argue with Jesus. I'm just telling you what Jesus said, okay? And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him. In Jesus' precious name, amen.